Welcome to the SOAP video series from Oak Tree Community Church in South Bend, Indiana. We are finishing a four-part series through some Old Testament prophetic books, and we're closing with what's actually not even a prophetic book. <laughs> We're counting it. <laughs> We're counting because it. it was written by a prophet. Yeah, right? there we go. So, yeah. uh, uh, little book of Lamentations. Yeah. It's overlooked a lot because yeah, it's exactly. it's you know tucked between Jeremiah and Ezekiel. These two really big, heavy prophetic books. It's only five chapters. Right. It's really easy to miss. I don't think I've miss. ever heard a message on Lamentations. That's because, <laughs> <laughs> well, for a lot of reasons, I'm throwing but... <laughs> it out there. So we'll see what he does with that one. We're doing no. this instead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, just uh, what it is, right? So not a full message. It'd be it's really it'd be a, a little it's, tough. It's really a heavy book. Yeah, I mean, is. I mean, the name sort of gives it away. I mean, it's a lamb lament lamentations. It's right. it's a yeah, it sorrow is a grief. Soft, you yeah. can you can really feel it, and like like you were saying before, um, you know, off camera. We don't really have to explain what it's about. Yeah, from the standpoint when you read it, you get it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, people are people are sad, and and their nation has been destroyed. Uh, but I think there's some really cool things in there, and there's some cool shifts that yeah. that happen in there too. But I don't see any spot in there where they're um, they're blaming Assyria, they're blaming Babylon. I mean, they may show up, yeah. but it's not like you did this to us. Right. It's God did it. Yeah, God is definitely the one who is, they see this as the hand of God. So the exile, right. this, so let's back up a little right. bit. It's Jeremiah who wrote this. Right. Okay. And and last week, we right at the end of the video, last week we talked about uh, Jeremiah, you know, wrote yeah, it towards the yep. end of Judah's reign. Right. So we're going to be in the uh, the early 600s BC before Nebuchadnezzar comes in from Babylon to do even the first captivity. Okay. Um, so Jeremiah is, is lamenting over where this, the state of the nation, where it's going and what's going to happen. Right. And, um, and he does it in such a neat way. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, is worth exploring as we talk about this today is, um, is that this is a very thoughtful, Thing. He he crafted this right. in a, in a in, in an interesting way, um, and I think one of the great. I just want to jump out with an application right away, because it's very depressive, right? It's I mean it's right. it's a downer type of a book, you know, of writing, but the fact that he spent time writing it, crafting it, thinking through it, reminds us that even in our depression. You know, we it, it's we don't just have to you know dump stuff on God. He wants to hear. We can approach Him in ways like this, right. and and it doesn't have to. All of our prayers don't have to be spur of the moment. Sometimes we think that a prayer can't be thought through. Right. So from the heart, but also from with the some mind. Thought. Yeah, yeah. Now, I think that's a big application. You know, most of the stuff is not going to apply to us directly. Right. Uh, there's some neat stuff in here, but I think one big application is just how do we pray? How do we approach God when we are in suffering, when we are in distress, when we are in trouble? Yeah. And that's that's exactly what it is, right? I mean, there there is the sorrow is there, the heartbreak is there and it and it definitely is is coming out. Yeah. So I also noticed between each uh, is each verse, each chapter, and it's not verse, even chapter, yeah. um, is a Hebrew letter. Yeah. Right? So what's the significance <laughs> of that? Why, well, that's why, part why of are we the, doing that? That's part of the craftiness of it. <laughs> Lamentations is one of the places where uh, we see this in the Psalms sometimes. Uh, sometimes it's in the Psalms and they don't even make a note of it because it's just one verse at a time. But Psalm 119 is... is uh, uh, one of the famous places, right, where you take one or more verses, and uh, you the in in Hebrew it the first word starts with the Hebrew letter, and then in this case the next verse starts with the next letter, and the third verse starts with the third letter, and so like in my printed copy here it actually has the letters you know yeah. Aleph Bet right. Gimel Dalit all the way down. So chapters 1, 2, and 4 follow that pattern. There's 22 okay. consonants or 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. There's 22 verses in 1, 2, and 4. 
in chapter three. Okay, so I gotta ask, when you're at the end of the alphabet, do, then does it start over? With yeah, with like chapter A, B, A, B, C. Yeah, with chapter with chapter two, it starts over. No, um, you said that it starts off with the letter of the alphabet as the as the first letter of the first word. Yep. And then the second line has the um, the second the next letter. letter. Yep. So when you're at the end of the alphabet, you run out of letters. Yep. Does it just flip over and start? Over at the beginning of the alphabet again? Well, it does, but there's 22 letters and there's 22 verses in chapter one. So one for each one, okay. right? And then chapter two, it, yeah, it starts over again. Okay. And then chapter four, it starts over again. Chapter three, there's 66 verses and they do them in sets of three. So three that start with Aleph, three that start with Bet, three that start with Gimel, all the mm -hmm. way down. So, again... To come up with that, right? right. He didn't make sense. To, yeah. He didn't just, you know, he's not just spewing prayers out, right? He's sitting here thinking exactly how he wants to craft this. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, chapters one, two, and four. Uh, in addition to this little thing, they all start with the same verse. One of each chapter starts with the same word. In Hebrew, it's um, Echa, and it means, and it's translated in the net as Alas, right? Or or How, or something. It, it's just this yeah. mark of Echa. Well, that is the name of the book in Hebrew. It's not called Lamentations. That's the Greek name. In Hebrew, a lot of times they grab the first word right. of the book, or the first phrase of the book, and that's its title. The, the name of this book in Hebrew is Alas. Alas. I mean, that's how yeah. bad, bad <laughs> things are. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't even know if we talk about it by chapters <laughs> or not. Uh, but I did say I saw a shift in there, which yeah. means that, that it's got to be pretty blatant, blatant <laughs> in there. Uh, but I said uh, things I noted. Um, the writer isn't b blaming Babylon. They continually say God caused this, God caused this, and not in a bad way. Mm -hmm. you know, this was, you know, really caused by them. And I think that's one of the changes, too. So at first it's, you know, God caused this. God was so mad he didn't even protect his own temple in there. And then uh, in verse 11, uh, my eyes are worn out from so much weeping. Yeah, and, chapter and, 2. And there seems to be a little bit, yeah, sorry. Uh, seems to be a little bit of a shift. And then chapter three, it's almost like they got to getting their composure a little bit. Hey, we're the laughing stock around here. Yeah. You know, people are making fun of us because our Lord, you know, had us had us wiped out because we didn't listen to them. And, you know, God really is good for those who trust him. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're they're kind of, you know, not building their God back up, but seem to be taking a different path like, you know, maybe we really should be trusting God. Not quite there yet, but yeah, but it, it's kind of building. Yeah, um, and then even you know, then then you see it going into um, the Lord's not going to reject us forever. Yep. So we we know that there's going to be a repentance and a recovery and a redemption uh, coming up, which so we see that a lot in the prophets, to. right? Yeah. You know, yep. there's the judgment and then there's the blessing, yep. right? Yeah. Yep. 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 I find, um, you know, when I read through this, I find uh, not only are chapters 1, 2, and 4 similar in their structure and their first words, but it seems to me, and it could just be the way I'm reading, it seems to me that 1, 2, and 4 are sort of the story of what is happening to them, right? It's, it's God is doing this. This is all of the destruction. This is what we're suffering. Chapter 3... Um, basically has the same amount of content as those three chapters together because right. it's, you know, 66 as a foot, right? Um, it seems a lot more personal for Jeremiah in chapter three, where he's talking about what he's suffering. We see, um, we see in chapters two a little bit and chapter three, uh, where he's talking about his eyes and his tears and he's weeping and he's called the weeping prophet. Some, some commentators like to call him the weeping prophet because of stuff like this. And it's in chapter three, I find interesting that you said that they are seeing the Lord is not going to keep us down. You know, he is going to restore us. I find it interesting that that is more in chapter three than one, two, and four, as as Jeremiah is is 
is focusing more on the personal side of his reflection as opposed to just it, you know Judah's reflection. It's like he's the only person of faith at this point, almost. Yeah. You know, he's. It, you, you can almost, uh, and maybe it's just me, but 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 you can almost feel the weight on Jared. Like he's carrying yeah, the he whole the, thing. Yeah. The, the nation. Yeah. I mean, uh, at least from a from a. Um, church point of view yeah yeah so the like the weight of the nation you know he's the he's the prophet at this point that you know he, as like he's the only one who st who still trusts god and and some of this comes out in in chapter three um and then in chapter four it switches back to these are all the things that Ju you know judah's suffering and these, yeah, this our is life what is god hard is our doing. life is impossible yeah. um we're paying for the sins of our fathers yeah uh, and yes, because you're doing sin the has sins of your sin father. has consequences. You're still doing the sins yeah. of your fathers. Yeah, yeah. Now, chapter five is interesting because it breaks every mold, it breaks every do. pattern. It doesn't have the acrostic. It doesn't have the same first word. It doesn't have uh, the, the you know the, the right number of verses and and all. It doesn't have. It's it's and it's a prayer. It's more like Jeremiah shifts, completely shifts gears, and he says, okay, God, here's where we're at, but we need to come back to you. Don't don't leave us forever. We trust you. And, I mean, it's 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 an it's an interesting rap i mean it like i said it just yeah. the whole thing shifts very you're talking about these shifts between who's talking and what they're talking right. about chapter five is completely off the page i mean it's just <laughs> completely different nice so yeah um all right so there's one more thing that that i like to bring out in, in lamentations okay and if you're using the net translation like like I do, um, you might miss it um, because the the way that the net says it is not the way that you're used to hearing it. But there is a hymn that is built around chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. The net says, The Lord's loyal kindness never ceases. His compassions never end. They are fresh every morning. Your faithfulness is abundant. Yeah, I wouldn't have. Not going to pick up on that one, right? Yeah. But if you read it in, in a different translation, say King James, because that's what the hymn was written out of, your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Yeah, great is your faithfulness. There it is. There it is. But that nugget right there, it's great hymn of the faith. Many of us have sang it for you know so many years, right? Great right. is your faithfulness, O Lord, our Father. Uh, you know, uh, your mercies are new every morning. The whole thing that comes out of Lamentations. It yeah. comes out that that come that uh, that expression of great faith comes out of deep deep sorrow. Yeah, good point. That's pretty amazing. Right. Right. Using something so bad for so good. Yeah. Yeah. So I never want to, I never want to uh, come to Lamentations without at least mentioning that one. Okay. Because of how, you know, because it is a heavy book. Right. And, and it needs to be read slowly. Don't, don't try to rush through yeah. it. You know, there's only, you know, there's only, you know, 22 chapters or 22 verses per chapter and we're spreading it out over six. So chapter three is going to be, you know, 33 verses, you know, for over two days, but it needs to be read slowly. It needs to be read with care. Well, with the history in mind. Yeah. On, on what was happening. Yeah. At the time. Yeah. And why did God do this? Because they rebelled, but it's always to bring them back. The hope that's always been to bring them back. So. All right. So how about we don't leave in the first place? <laughs> Cut that's the, a good plan. Cut out the middle, man. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else in Lamentations? No, I was looking, wanted... looking through my notes. Um, no. All, All right. I think I'm good. How about you? Nope. Nope. All right. Let's, let's, let's end on Great is Thy Faithfulness. Sounds oh God, our Father. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. So take take some time, read through it, read through it carefully. If this is your first time reading through it, 
uh, enjoy, and it's hard, hard to enjoy a lamentation, but enjoy, especially as we get to that middle part, sort of the climax of, of the book in chapter three, uh, extolling God, exalting God out of, out of our deepest sorrow, learning that that is possible so that whenever you and I are going through things, we can do that. And this is, this is how God wants us to approach him. And that's okay. Maybe you had know somebody who you need to share this with. Maybe they're going through something and you can take them to the book of Lamentations and say, see, God really does care and he is merciful and he is uh, faithful and kind and uh, maybe a great way to share the gospel with somebody. We'd love to hear if you can do that. Love to hear about it. Um, love to hear your questions and your comments and your insights in this. Uh, feel free to drop us a note. Otherwise, we'll be back next time with uh, a new series. Okay. Sounds good. Bye, everybody. Bye.